And today we're going to be taking a look at Munchkin Wonderland by Steve Jackson Games. And what else are we going to be doing? I'm going to do like a small little walkthrough of how to play on this. And we're going to talk about tea probably today. <laughs> so I hope you guys appreciate all my horrible tea knowledge, okay? Now, Munchkin Wonderland is a game for 6 plus, or ages of 6 plus, but I would say this is more like a kid's game, guys. But for kids who have not gone into and played Munchkin before, this is the perfect starting or stepping stone for the game because it teaches them sort of, okay, you're going to have modifiers, you're going to be calculating things with your cards and stuff like that, and you still have the adventure of like running through caves and running through areas and fighting monsters and everything. So let's get this to the table and get that out of the way for you guys. And, of course, make sure to leave lots of comments if you have any questions about Munchkin Wonderland. Let us know. Let's see here. I love the art on this. Uh, Munchkin Wonderland is such a great theme to have. So, this comes with your traditional instructions here. And the instructions are very straightforward, very easy to go through. The pictures highlight everything you need to know. It's a very easy set of instructions to read. You get your board here. There we go. And it's so colorful. I love the colorful art in this. Oh, uh, it's just like a tiny, tiny bit too big. Maybe I can adjust just a tiny bit for you guys, okay? Give me just a second. I don't think that's any better. <laughs> Hello, who do we have joining us today? Major Basil. It's nice seeing you here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your little standees and your cards out of your box here. Oh, you get two cute little pink dice. Look at that, guys. Oh, they're so cute. They have like a little purple color to them. And my, I um, apologize, my cat is going to wreck something here in just a second. She's giving me the eyes right now. You're making eye contact, it's not never good. Never good. You got your standees there. And oh, the little figures, you have your rabbit and Alice in Wonderland on here. We'll put those under there too so you can see them. Except for that green one. You can't see that green one. The rabbit's adorable in this. So you can be Alice or you can be a rabbit. And then you're gonna have treasure cards and you're gonna have monster cards. It makes it really quick and simple to play. Let's open up these decks. I hope I pre... Nope, I only did one of them here. I pre-cut one of them. The other one I'm going to fight with, I'm sure. Here are going to be your treasure cards. You're going to end up mixing those up. And in the treasure deck, you're going to have friends, which are going to be permanents. And then you're going to have other items, which are just going to grant you bonuses to fights. Okay, so with friends, you can have, for example, your March Hare that you can set in front of you. And then he's gonna give you a plus one bonus for any boss fight or any monster fight. And then you can use special things like a shawl, for example. A shawl's not very Munchkin Wonderland-y. <laughs> yeah, the glory cat was definitely ready to pounce. She's been needing like my love all day. See, there she is right there. Hopefully she won't get in the way. Here we go, let's see. Like, we're talking about tea time. We need like a cup of tea, right? We have the Hatter's Watch, though. Here we go. Or you can have, like, the Hatter's Watch like this, which is going to give you a plus two bonus on that. And you get to put those cards out in front of you. Most of them are one-time use only cards. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I usually lock her up ahead of time. So most of them are going to be one-time use only cards, except for those friend cards, which do stay out. And then let's get to the monsters. We have our monster cards. And this one here is a little different as opposed to the, what was the other one that they did? I can't remember all of a sudden. Munchkin Treasure Hunt, which all of the bosses had like little modifiers on them. So they were stinky monsters or they were like mean monsters and stuff like that. And these ones are actually monsters who are going to help the main monsters in the battle fight you. Because you have the Bandersnatch, the Boojum. Uh, the Red Queen, the Jabberwock, the Queen of Hearts, and the White Queen here, which are all monsters that you're going to battle on this board, okay? Let's go through and see some of these guys here. 
So we have some draw two monster cards, and then we have bread and butterfly, a little mouse. He's going to give you zero to monster. You have ones that give you plus one to monster, like a walrus who helps in the fight, as far as for the monster side. So what players are going to do, wherever my standees went off to, I think the cat's laying on them. Here we go. What players are going to do is they're going to start at the entrance right here. And then you're going to go ahead and roll a dice to see how many movement points you get. And then you're going to move that many spaces, okay? If you land on a treasure here, you're going to get to collect a treasure card. And if you land on any of the monsters that are here, you're going to go directly to that room. So if I landed on the Jabberwock, I would be teleported to the Jabberwock over here. And he's a plus 12 monster, and you're going to draw two monster cards for him. So he would have a lion with him. And he would have a unicorn with him. So you're going to have the 12 plus 3 and 3 for that. And then the person who landed in there is then going to roll the dice for themselves and add this modifier here for yourself along with any other cards and friends you might have in the game. It's a really simple game to play, but for the kid aspect on it, you're going to be doing a lot of math, which is always great. And it has a really cute thing theme to it, you know? And of course, if you guys have questions about anything in the game or want to see any cards or anything, I'm right here right now live. So you guys can go ahead and ask questions and let me know what, what you want to see in the game, okay? What else do we have here? So, oh, end of the game. So for the end of the game, what players do is you're trying to collect all of these treasure cards here, right there. And the game doesn't end until everybody has collected all of the treasure cards. So if cards get discarded, they get shuffled and then put back on the stack here and then you go through all of them. And then at the very end, you're gonna count up how much treasure each player has. And the treasure is actually on the bottom of the cards here. It's gonna be harder to see because the green screen, but it's a little thing right here that shows how many gold pieces everything is. And probably for super, super young kids, because I think the last time I played Munchkin Treasure Hunt, I know. I played it with a really, really young group of kids. Counting up these particular cards, some of them needed help with. Uh, they were more along the ages of, I want to say, like, in that four range, you know. And that was a little difficult for them adding all of those up. But once they get to an age of six and up, that's no problem at all, okay. And what, did it, what card did it, the six impossible things before breakfast... These cards are adorable. They have the Vorpal Blade, too, here. The Jabberwock Be Gone. And, of course, they have all the super adorable same sort of theming with all of the cards and everything as the same Munchkin or Steve Jackson Games games do, is that making fun of kind of everything that's happening here. I'm going to take a quick look through the monster deck and point out any ones that are particularly adorable because we do have pigs in a blanket here. Oh, look at it. He's so cute. And we have a red king, some walruses. We have the white king. You don't hear about those guys as much, right? I don't know. I don't. I, it's been a long t time since I read any any of those books, and I don't remember the red king and the white king. What else do we have in here? And these cards just make little kids laugh so much. Oh my gosh! We have a the white rabbit, Tweedledum. Maybe that's a better way to go through them here so you all can see. Duchess, Jub Jub Bird. He's cute, guys. All the king's horses. <laughs> he only has a few there. I only, see, I only see the four. They do have crowns on. Maybe it's harder to get horses if you have to give them a crown for every time. Every time you get one. All the king's men. Humpty Dumpty. The Red Knight. The Cheshire Cat. See, look at Be jealous. This is the cat right here. <laughs> and the Executioner. Jeez. You don't want to run into him in any fights. And then as far as the... Keep going, kitty. As far as the other items here, the little treasures. Let's see what we got. We have the Caterpillar's Room. Play this card to re-roll a die that you've just, re that you've just rolled. And you have a couple of cards of those, which is nice because sometimes when you get trapped up in those rooms and you have a monster in there and you're trying to fight it, you can use one person as a friend to help you fight. That, and, but they have to be, I think, six spaces away on that. 
we have a little tart. Play this along with a treasure card, except a friend card. And at the end of your turn, you put back the other treasure card. Oh, you put the other treasure card back in your hand. We have your drink me bottle. That's classic, right? We have, what else? Oh, the eat me cake. Look at that, guys. That's so cute. Play when you have rolled a die and roll it again and add two to the result. Okay, so we have the little dormouse here. We have a gnat, and that's going to help you in battle. Those are friends, so you keep those out in front of you. We have a mad hatter. We have the hatter's watch, your little caterpillar guy here. What other sort? Of, oh, the March Hare. I think we saw him. And then as far as like other items that you'd be carrying on you, the ball of worsted yarn. Now, if you guys don't like the Alice in Wonderland theme, then definitely Munchkin Treasure Hunt is another good one to do. Bill the Lizard, a little <laughs> white knight, and a golden key. Yeah, these are cute. They're If you like Alice in Wonderland, this is a win. It's so adorable, the art in it. Griffin and the King of Hearts here. And I think that's about it. If you guys don't have any other questions on how to play or anything, I think that's all, all we need. What else do we have going on? So Steve Jackson Games is going to be at Gen Con for sure. They're going to be doing lots of small games. So what we talked about last week, we'll have those there. We'll have, oh man, I'm blanking on all the really cool stuff. We're going to do like a Gen Con show. And the week before Gen Con, I'm going to list everything that we're going to be doing, which is super nice. So you guys don't have to worry about that. You're going to know exactly where our booth is. We're going to be talking about what sort of special events are going on for Gen Con. I'm super excited about it. We're also going to be doing some, we want to do live video down there, but I don't think we're going to be able to swing live coverage, but we're going to be doing recorded coverage and then uploading it after, which I'm super excited about because I know that we're going to try to do a special Munchkin game with Andrew Hackard, which is really exciting. And we're also going to be talking about Car Wars. We're going to be talking about Deadly Doodles. And we're going to be talking about the designers or talking to the designers on all of those. We're going to be talking about dice. I know that Steve Jackson Games has a ton of new dice coming out. So we're going to have some highlights on those and some special announcements. So I'm really excited to do that with Gen Con and be there and show everything off for you guys. And if there's anything specific that you guys want to see while we're there at Gen Con, any uh, any special dice that you want another look at or anything, I know they have dice bags that are coming out. Let us know in the comments and we'll make sure to go ahead and try to highlight some of that stuff for you guys, okay? Yes, the tea talk. I didn't get much tea talk in because the cat was here. So on the table distracting everybody right here. I'm getting I'm getting her started again. <laughs> uh, for your tea tips for the day, uh, make sure not to steep it for too long. That ruins it. And Arizona sun tea is the best. <laughs> That's the best way to brew tea is in the sun. <laughs> you don't have to worry about temperature or anything that way. <laughs> Thanks so much, though, for everybody joining us today. If you want to know more about any anything, go ahead and leave comments, and we'll talk about them down there. Other than that, we will see you guys all next week, okay? <laughs> <laughs>